I know we don't have a ton of time, so I want to start by talking about you guys just released that first EP for Post Human, and it's not going to be, it's not like a, a pandemic release, and that's going to be it. You guys have decided to do something a little bit different. You guys are doing this, you know, four EPs all under the kind of the post human umbrella. Uh, what was the, what's the reasoning behind that? You know, knowing full well that you guys have done, I mean, you guys have done albums before. Why go the EP route this time? Um, well, I think partly because we've done so many different styles of music. The last album was very varied and we, we really wanted this one to have a, a, a theme and a real vibe. So I think we also didn't want to just be restricted to doing one type of thing. So it allowed us to kind of have four different vibes in mind, you know, as we're writing. So for example, when we've been writing over the last year, some songs it's like we'll write them and then and then save it and be like that would be better for the maybe for the second or third EP. So we have been doing that. And then this first EP started to become to have this kind of slightly more dystopian heavy feel. Um so yeah, I get it's just to allow us to 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 dabble in different types of music but still keep a bit of a theme. And also we wanted to make slightly smaller records. Um so yeah this way was just felt like it would be something a bit different and a bit of an experiment and yeah we just we just felt like the time was right to try a different sort of release plan and being a bit more regular with our releases rather than dropping an album touring for two years then going away and having to kind of like start up the motors again it was almost like setting ourselves a challenge of we're going to keep writing and you know keep us keep our kind of keep ourselves active you know, it seems like there's a lot of bands that are kind of going that route because they don't want to be away for the two and three years to go and write and record. So instead, they're releasing. Instead of going full album, they're going. Here's a single here. Here's a single there. I mean, I'll, I'll ask you about Evanescence in a bit, but they've, they've gone that route. They're re releasing a couple of songs here and there. So it seems like that's actually the way a lot of people are going. Maybe. I think with, with the way streaming is now, you can, you can kind of do what you want. If you want to release some people releasing huge records, you know, 17, 18 track, almost like playlisty type records and then some people are just doing singles i think the whole album format is kind of gone obviously people i think people will still think of 10 to 15 tracks as an album but there's nothing to say you can't go four tracks then four tracks then four tracks or you know you can kind of do it how you want but at the same time i think you need a with this record we were originally going to have it be five or six songs and and then we kind of felt like because of our own history and because we were because it was a little heavier and our fan base have probably craved that from us for, for a while. Maybe we'd make it a little longer just so they have enough to get their teeth into, you know what I mean? Yeah, right. So it's interesting me spending some time with the, uh, the new EP yesterday. And I mean, we played Ludens when it first came out. And that song was written before all of this happened. But when you sit and you listen to the EP altogether and Ludens is on there, it kind of fits what you guys are doing on that EP, even though it was written way before any of this happened. Uh, you guys, you guys don't have like a like a magic eight ball. You guys don't have like a way to see into the future, right? Like this isn't something you knew was coming, correct? We don't. I think it was because um, obviously we don't. I think um, <laughs> the computer game um, that we made that song for is is a is a little bit of a dystopian kind of desolate theme about connection. So I think in a way it was a kind of lucky thing really that that we you know we made this song and ollie kind of wrote all the lyrics based around the concepts of that game and then this year happened and all those a lot of those themes in that game are in some way relevant now i mean some of even the not being able to shake hands there's this line about how do we form a connection when we can't even shake hands in the song which is crazy yeah right it's actually crazy you have to feel a little, a little bit like a prophet of some sort a little bit, but then again, I think you could, I mean, obviously there's a literal thing of like actually having germs on your hands, but I think just in terms of like people not physically seeing each other, it is something that you see more of in, in you know, in today's world anyway. Um, so yeah, a lot of those themes just, it was a bit of a fluke to some extent, but it kind of sat perfectly in with all the other themes that we wanted to talk about this year and on the rest of the record. Speaking of seeing each other, did you guys record all of this in separate locations? I assume you weren't able to get together to do it. Yeah, no, we, we'd started in February. I was up in Sheffield at Ollie's house and we, we started demoing stuff there. And um, I, the lockdown happened. So we had 
I had to leave and I lived quite far away from, from the rest of the guys. So as I left, I kind of left all my stuff. He's got a little home studio. So I left my gear set up and I gave him like a quick lesson. He's never recorded himself. So I kind of gave him a quick lesson on how to use the gear. And then I was like, okay, see you later. So we just went <laughs> home and, and separated. And then after about a week, we got on FaceTime and we, t we tested it out for a day and started trying things. And, and he figured out how to, you know, he, he got to grips with it quite quickly. And then he was recording himself. He dropped the, we had a shared Dropbox where all the files would, the vocal files would go into folders as we were demoing stuff. I'll pull them into Pro Tools, which is the software I was using. And then I'd play the music back to him as I was working on it. We created this kind of weird way of working over the internet and um and it worked eventually it worked you know it was one of those things that I've, I've always thought was completely just impossible for us um yeah and within a week i was kind of like you know I'm, I'm starting to quite like this way of working even though it's even though it's weird and a bit different i'm kind of in some ways i'm enjoying it so yeah we, we just found a way and and we did it all like that we didn't see each other other than the video shoot which we did fairly recently we didn't see each other You've got a bunch of a bunch of guests on the album. You've got Young Blood. You've got Baby Metal. You've got Amy Lee. And uh, when you when you start writing these songs, do you write them with these guests in mind? Like, man, I hope we can get Young Blood to do this. Man, I hope we can get Baby Metal to be a part of this. Or do you write the songs and then the ideas for the for the collaborations come about? Like, how does that all happen? Um, it usually happens at some point during the writing of the song. Um, it can be different for each one. Uh, the one with Baby Metal Kingslayer, we, we started writing that in January um, and it was knocking about as a demo for ages. And, and we did say early on, we want to get Baby Metal on this track before we'd even finish the song. So then once they came, we kind of spoke to them and they were keen. So as we were writing the song, we had Baby Metal in mind a little bit. So I think that pushed the way we took some of the musical elements and um, we maybe felt a bit freer to do some stuff that we wouldn't necessarily have done just as Bring Me The Horizon. Um, so yeah, there was that. And then Youngblood was just one of those like random ideas. It was, it, the, the song had this kind of like punky, frantic energy. Um, and I think Youngblood had just released his first single from his album campaign. So I was just seeing him everywhere on Twitter constantly and just, kept seeing his name and I was just like Youngblood and I just said I think it was my, I just said to Ollie you know we should get Youngblood on this track because it just sounds like perfect for him and he hit him up and um oh, he was keen and he went in straight into the studio that evening in fact oh. he just went in smashed it out sent all the stuff back and it was basically perfect um so that one came about really organically um Nova Twins are a UK art, art, artist who were really keen on and that one came quite late in the process. And who's the other one? Amy Lee. Amy Lee, um, I don't know how that one came about. But yeah, we just she said she was a fan and obviously we're everyone's a fan of Amy Lee. So we messaged her and uh, we had this idea of the song being almost like a love song, but it's it's not quite a love song. It's actually almost like a to do with the human race and Mother Earth and this kind of like double meaning thing. And she was fully she was fully into it from the off and yes, yeah, so she smashed it. I'm looking forward to hearing the other EPs in the, uh, in, the, in the set. What is kind of the timeline? What are you guys thinking for the next one and the third one and the fourth one? Do you guys even have that far planned out or no? Not really. I mean, we've let, we're going to start quite soon, I think, because we've got nothing else to do. But <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, the whole, I guess the idea of it is it's ready when it's ready. And we'd said in the next year, I think everyone, all of our fans jumped on. Well, we said in the next year in like July, August time, but everyone was like four EPs before December. And I was like, no, no, next year, definitely not this year. So I think, I mean, I would like to, I would like us to be, I think the whole thing is going to take a while, but if each EP is, this last EP is nine tracks long. So, I mean, it's an album really. Right. Um, there's a lot of bands who release an album like that every two to three years. So I think that we'll be getting stuff out a lot quicker than that. And I would, I would hope this second EP is, is out, you know, before summer, before summer of next year for sure. Well, I'm looking forward to hearing uh, hearing more of it and I'm looking forward to playing Teardrops on the station and uh, getting more of this stuff from you guys here very soon. I know you've got a bunch of these scheduled, so appreciate you taking some time to do a chat and hopefully we'll be able to get out and see you guys on the road here soon. Thanks very much and thanks for your support and for your listeners' support. We appreciate it.